We've seen homogeneous equations where the right-hand side is zero. What do we do if we have a term on the right-hand side? Quality input determines quality output and feedback. A quote from Ikechukwu Joseph. So bearing in mind this quote, let's have a look at a differential equation. d squared y by dx squared plus y is zero. We saw last week we have a general solution, y is a times cos x plus b times sin x. Let's add in conditions at zero, a condition on the function, a condition on the derivative, and we get that the solution is now that y is equal to cos x. But let's now see what happens when we have a non-homogeneous equation. What happens when we add in this term here, f of x? Well, it turns out that our solution is changed by adding in this term here, some new y of x, which will depend on the f of x. So you could consider we input f of x and we output this new part of y. So we have a mechanism in a differential equation for turning input into output. So let's see what does the output actually look like. Let's imagine we have our f of x, our input, as displayed in red. It is, at the moment, a quadratic function with a, b and c involved. But then, in blue, we have the output that comes out of the differential equation. So you can see input in red, output in blue. And then, as we change the input, you can see we're just adding a constant onto the input. You can see the shape of the output changes. We add an x term. And again, you can see the shape and the curvature of the output term change. Similarly, when we change the x squared, then the output changes as well. It would seem that in this case, the input changes and it's causing a small change in the output, but there are situations where this can be slightly different. Let's take a situation where we have trig input. And the trig input can be at different frequencies. We're going to vary the frequency of the trig input. So starting off from very small frequencies, so you can see, for small frequencies, we have trig input in red, and the output looks fairly much like the input. Slightly different, we increase the frequency and you can see now it looks like the output seems to be operating on two frequencies. There's a frequency of the input, but there's also another frequency that we can see three or four periods of here. So then increasing the input, increasing the frequency slightly more, it does seem, well, this when we see the output, the output is operating on that same frequency, but it's getting higher and lower. 
we do seem to have a Beats phenomenon. And then it turns out that the frequency, when we increase the frequency towards a critical frequency, it does now seem that the output increases, the oscillations get larger and larger, it would seem without limit. If we go past the critical frequency, you can see now we go back through the beats phenomenon where the amplitude gets larger and smaller, larger and smaller, and then it seems to operate on the different frequencies as earlier. So something is happening. So there's interesting interaction between the output and the input. The output depends on the input, but the frequency is a crucial thing here. We can see situations where the output is smaller than the input or the output is larger than the input. And certainly, when you've got the situation that frequencies, the frequency of the input gets closer to a critical frequency, this can lead to resonance, where it appears that you have vibrations and oscillations occurring without significant input. So we see some resonance occurring here because of the equalities of frequencies. And of course, there are courses later on in MACE about vibrations. Simplicity does not precede complexity, but follows it. A quote by Alan Perlis. We're going to solve some fairly complicated differential equations, but don't forget the applicability of the simplest ones. Some of the simplest equations, some of the simplest differential equations, we will come back to again and again. So, we've seen those equations. Let's go ahead and solve them.